This is a five-minute film about the origin of life at submarine hydrothermal vents. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Geochemists tell us that liquid water was present on the young Earth roughly 4.2 billion years ago, about the time when the late heavy meteorite bombardment came to an end. Since the discovery of black smokers in 1978, deep-sea hydrothermal vents have influenced thinking on life's origin. Today, biologists think that a particular kind of vent, discovered in 2000 by Deb Kelly at a site called Lost City, might be more relevant for life's emergence than the original black smoke events. The chemical conditions at Lost City are more conducive to life, not nearly as hot as black smokers and richer in hydrogen, an important source of chemical energy. The geochemical differences between these two types of vents are substantial. On the right, a black smoker is shown. Black smokers sit directly on top of magma chambers at oceanic spreading zones. Water from the sea floor is drawn down into cracks in the crust. It comes into close contact with 1,200 degree magma and exits black smokers at roughly 400 degrees. That is too hot for microbial life. On the left, we see convection at Lost City. The water does not come into contact with magma, so effluent at Lost City is much cooler, around 70 to 90 degrees. In addition, a very important geochemical process that's been characterized at Lost City is going on. It is called serpentinization. During serpentinization, water molecules are reduced by iron, too, present in iron magnesium silicate rocks that make up the Earth's submarine crust. That produces molecular hydrogen, shown in white, which leaves the vent in the effluent along with sulphur, shown in yellow. At the vent ocean interface, sulphur precipitates iron too, shown in black, and nickel, shown in green, to generate transition metal sulphides, which serve two important functions, catalysis and compartmentalization. The mineral microchambers have catalytic activity because they're made of transition metals, which are important catalysts in chemical industry and in microbes. Their large unfilled D and F electron shells can hybridize to make metastable bonds with carbon and nitrogen. Modern microbes that live in the Earth's crust fix CO2 using nickel. Schematically, CO2 binds nickel and is reduced by hydrogen to generate a nickel-bound carbonyl. In the next step, a chemically accessible methyl group binds the same nickel atom. In modern metabolism, this is catalyzed by nickel atoms in the enzyme acetyl-CoA synthase. At origins, transition metal sulfides at a vent could have done the job. The carbonyl undergoes insertion to generate a carbon-carbon bond. The catalyst-bound acetyl group is removed via thiol cleavage. The resulting product is an acetyl thioester which are the most central components in all of metabolism, a hub for all biosynthesis. In anaerobes that live from hydrogen and CO2, thioesters are also an important form of energy currency that can directly lead to the synthesis of ATP. Their simple and primitive chemistry provides links between modern microbes and ancient conditions on early Earth. In addition to catalysis, the metal sulfides provide compartmentation the green dots represent the basic intermediate building blocks of life, RNA precursors and amino acids. The RNA is depicted as polymerizing into RNA-like molecules that yield something similar to what Walter Gilbert envisaged as the RNA world, a realm where molecules could evolve and undergo selection toward greater chemical complexity. A crucial step in the origin of life was the advent of the ribosome and protein synthesis, enabling evolution of genes and proteins. This requires stable compartments and a steady supply of precursors and energy. Lost City has provided reducing conditions for over 30,000 years. Finally, DNA lipid and cell wall synthesis allow escape of the first free living cells, which in this theory were acetogenic bacteria and methanogenic archaea which still live today from hydrogen and CO2.